The Virtual Lead Marketing Conference continues with its focus on loyalty, engagement, analytics, and digital applications. I'm your host, John Karolewski. Our final presentation of the day answers the question, how can big data impact CPG marketing? We have a few housekeeping items. If you have questions, please type them in the chat box in the lower left of your screen, and we'll answer them along the way as time allows. And after this presentation, we'll have our final CPG and retail trivia quiz for valuable prizes, including the grand prize of a Kindle Fire HD. So without further ado, how can big data impact CPG marketing, presented by James Tenser, who is the principal with VSN Strategies. Jamie? Greetings. It's nice to be with everybody today. And um, uh, I, I want to say that uh, consumer product marketers are just saturated in big data, which um, I like to say it comes out in torrents, right? And they keep increasing. They come from the retail selling systems, from our marketing analytics, from social media, from our search engines, from our mobile devices. And as an industry, it's quite evident to us that big data is important. We're pretty sure we know why, but um, as our survey results are going to uh, reveal, we're still figuring out how to make the most of it uh, for the benefit of our consumers and our brands. And uh, so, uh, so here's our little uh, um, uh, survey, big data and marketing, where we are and where we're heading. I had a, a terrific opportunity, thanks to um, the folks at CPG Matters and Shopper Technology Institute, um, to, uh, to help field a um, survey this past fall, uh, late in the year, uh, 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 with some uh, excellent uh, uh, counsel from some friends at Gartner Group as well. And we reached out to executives at manufacturing firms in the food and beverage, health and beauty, and general merchandise categories. The goal was to find out do brand marketers, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a have a grip on on big data yet, um, and uh, and are are we moving um, beyond understanding to actions that really are making a different a difference in our businesses? So, here's some top line. Um, we're discovering that marketers indeed are leveraging big data. Uh, you know, they have integrating um, some new data sources. More than half are using are linking syndicated data with the new data sources, especially in promotion. Um, a strong majority are applying big data insights to sharpen their promotion strategies. Um, technology investments lagging a little bit behind, about a third, but there is an intention to uh, to continue to invest this coming year, um, and and that's almost half the industry. Uh, combined, uh, brand marketers want to leverage big data to improve performance at retail. They want to connect with consumers m more directly and more effectively. They want to enhance their ability to differentiate uh, themselves from competitors, and the effort is certainly underway. But they're still seeking understanding. Uh, it's interesting. It's telling that two-thirds say that they're still determining a business case for big data, that um, a very small minority are actually deploying big data solutions in consumer marketing. And I'm going to interrupt myself because I see a comment about audio issues, which I apologize. I'm going to try and hold the receiver closer. I hope that helps. Um, uh, to continue, fewer than 10% have talent acquisition strategies. Uh, talent is an interesting and, and a, a very important aspect of this because it's not just the data, it's the people who know what to do with it. And measurement and ROI, still uh, some ways to go there. So let's talk about the status at the CPG companies that responded to our survey. a snapshot, so to speak. So big data adds a lot of complexity for us. At the same time, it puts the marketing ROI under a more powerful microscope. So uh, big data is certainly an example of what um, uh, Voltaire famously said, you know, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Uh, uh, seeking perfection is, is perhaps a, um, um, a bad bet, 
but uh, there's still a lot of good that can be developed from uh, extracting even the first layers of value from, from big data, um, big marketing data. And uh, it's certainly true for our industry. So we asked our respondents how ready they are. What are you doing to get ready? And um, uh, a large majority in this um, multiple response question identified that they were still working on the business need, the business case. Um, they're, they're still looking for tools. About four in 10 said that. And it suggests the rest aren't even really at that stage yet. Um, the data trust issue, which is kind of fascinating, um, uh, goes through discussion about veracity, the truthfulness or the, uh, the, the clear understanding of, of big data findings that we're going to see comes up here and there elsewhere in the, in the, in the study. Um, uh, now, now, our friends at Gartner uh, have asked similar questions of other groups, in particular IT professionals. And um, they, um, uh, looking at our responses, and in fact, uh, questions which we deliberately designed to parallel theirs, they see a very similar distribution of responses, they say, uh, in their survey. And that's, so that's corroborative evidence. So looking at the level of adoption, in general, information gathering is still the primary activity for the consumer product sector. Uh, deployment, um, well, it's starting, but it's a relative minority of, um, of participants, as you see here, 6.2% in this question. Um, and once again, um, we saw a mirror to uh, similar responses from the IT community uh, in, in industry that Gartner looked at. Now investment. So, all right, so we're, we say we're doing things that we're putting our money uh, where our mouths are, so to speak. And in fact, in this uh, uh, question, a third are investing in big data technology, another 17% planning to invest within the next year. Uh, so that, that's fully half of the industry now at this stage that uh, know where they're going. Um, you know, plans to invest two years out are also significant, but um, uh, uh, we can uh, perhaps interpret that as hopeful thinking at this point. Um, but it is notable that we've got you know, collectively 38% who either don't know or have no plans or haven't responded. So the commitment of funds to big data is still a, um, uh, uh, an unanswered question at a fairly large slice of the respondent firms. So we had some pretty, uh, how would we say, uh, 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 brutal honesty, I guess is the right way to, to, to call it, when we asked companies to self-assess their maturity when it came to leveraging big data. Uh, in, in the consumer products marketing world. And I've included the definitions here. I won't read them all at length, but uh, uh, what's notable here is that um, only about a, a combined 20% uh, uh, or 21% of the uh, respondents consider their efforts at this stage to be mature or very mature. So they know it's important. Um, they're still formulating uh, strategy. And um, uh, here, I, I guess we could commend the respondents for if, if they're not the, yet, there yet for saying so. Uh, and what this is another place where we saw some parallel for, for Gartner uh, with the Gartner respondents. Um, uh, and in fact, one comment we heard is that it's, it's notable that in this survey there was about 20% um, that didn't even respond, and perhaps those were the ones that were not quite so brutally honest. As, um, as the respondents were. So we asked some binary questions too in terms of self-assessment, agree or disagree with statements. Um, we defined a big data marketing strategy, yes. Um, uh, almost almost three-fourths of the respondents. Uh, we can compare that though in Figure 2, where 28% said they were at the strategy stage or beyond when they were asked to self-raise their adoption. Um, so these are perhaps some inconsistencies that are worth uh, pointing out here in the data. Um, we're using data in our marketing strategy that it's a new approach for organizations, and that's uh, agreed to by most, uh, or slight majority. Um, measurement of ROI, um, we could interpret 
this finding, even though two-thirds say they are not yet, it is perhaps hopeful that even a third are measuring program ROI at this stage. Uh, it's well known how, uh, how challenging that is uh, for CPG marketers. So all right, we'll take a little pause from throwing numbers at you for a minute with what I'll call an interstitial. So, so what's so what's so darn big about big data? And um, uh, in these conversations, we often run into a um, perhaps a, uh, a little bit of a gap between what we think it is and what it really is. And uh, uh, if by now you haven't uh, uh, confronted this conversation uh, often enough, I thought it's worth talking about. Uh, what do we mean by big? And uh, we do not mean more fields, more rows, bigger hard drives. It's not merely that the database is larger and has more content. There's really a different character, different traits to what um, we're understanding big data to be now. And um, uh, very often the, the data professionals, the IT professionals talk about three Vs, sometimes a fourth. So that volume, variety, velocity, which is very likely familiar to many of you. Um, some add veracity or truthfulness, and that's if you're lucky. And um, uh, we can um, uh, uh, recognize that the volume is important, but uh, to my uh, perception, big data is really defined by the data types and the sheer speed of its creation. So the creation of unstructured data types, such as what we're deriving now from, from things like text, images, audio and video, it's just exploding. And it's the result of the widening use of social and mobile and, and search media by expanding segment of the private citizenry. And so as a result, we have more apps, more channels, more individuals participating, larger files of various types. Um, let's face it, most of it is low-value junk. But there's an, awful, an awfully large amount, and marketers need to learn how to sift it for the valuable bits. It, it's like panning for gold. Um, the old data analysis tools don't necessarily apply in this context, but it's growing fast. In fact, the faster it grows, the faster it grows. And uh, uh, part of the, um, the, the magic that um, needs to happen with big data is learning how to sort of tap that flow for the actionable insights without getting bogged down in crunching numbers. So okay, so what are some of the, well, uh, before I move a along, this is a good time for questions if there are any. In fact, we have a couple pauses, but I'm not seeing any now yet. Um, if, um, uh, if you like, however, we're going to have um, a couple of the breaks like this in the presentation, so please don't hesitate. Yeah, type your questions in the chat box in the lower left part of your screen, and we'll answer them as they come up. Very well. So CPG marketers are really they're forging ahead on activities, and they are beginning to mine big data for insights that can guide marketing tactics. Um, now, remember, our survey focused on product marketing professionals, and their responses tend to focus on what you would anticipate, promotion, targeting, uh, things like that. Um, and, and they also say that they're folding new types of data into the marketing equation. And um, that's including, but it's not only, uh, the kinds of data that they're finding is derived from social media. At the same time, but they're struggling to derive the value from these activities. And they're working hard to master new types of data and new analytic techniques. Um, and uh, many who are about to see report success at finding new consumer insights as a result of big data activities. But uh, some of the other anticipated benefits may be a little slower to arrive. Let's move along. So here's the laundry list, right? a multiple response question, what types of activities um, or for what activities have you applied insights that have been generated by big data? And it's, it's fairly clear here, promotion, targeting, segmentation rose to the top. Um, by the way, this is not the order of presentation of the choices. Uh, we've just sorted them by the frequency of response. Uh, promotion strategies, naturally, that's our audience's stock and trade, um, and certainly targeting and segmentation which is exactly what we hope we would derive from um, uh, the insights that big data can bring us. And um, uh, uh, it's interesting that there's a, a bit of a drop-off when you get to things like 
pricing, customer experience, and new product. Um, uh, new product is something we'll focus on because we saw some other interesting responses elsewhere in the survey. Um, and when we come up, for example, this, to I, I think it'll be uh, uh, Figure 11, there were um, just four and a half percent that said that product development was likely to benefit from big data. And that, that's a bit of a differential here. I think it has to do with how the questions are asked, of course. Um, so we see experimentation is underway, and opinions are certainly being formed about what matters. Notice what's low in this list, things like risk management, security, regulatory compliance, um, not big with our respondent base, um, although they may not be uh, unimportant. Um, and um, uh, uh, here again, uh, in, in, in our review with our, our good friends at Gartner, uh, uh, they felt that the respondents for this group really put more priority on, uh, 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 on uh, promotion marketing activities, demand driving as it will, um, and um, uh, perhaps less on uh, process efficiencies or um, uh, business models. Um, uh, so we also interpret these results as being somewhat role related based on the audience that we sought out. Jamie, uh, we do have yes. a question that came in. Uh, <clears throat> I could use some interpretation on that one, John, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, uh, why haven't retailers forced a faster need to CPGs? Yeah. I see I need a little interpretation myself. If the uh, questioner would like to uh, reformulate the question or elaborate, that will be fine. Meanwhile, why don't you proceed, Jamie? Yeah, I'd like that. I, I think I could guess, but rather than do that, I appreciate John, that, 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 that suggestion. Um, I'll be glad to address it um, shortly. Um, so uh, another set of binary questions, agree or disagree. Um, uh, there's an emphasis on driving demand and ensuring sort of optimized activity at retail. And, uh, and uh, uh, our respondents, they're, they're moving ahead with more sophisticated kinds of data analysis, like combining syndicated data with other sources, um, things like sentiment uh, analysis or social sentiment analysis. Um, combining data sets in new ways um, and, uh, and bringing new types of data in. And um, uh, wh weather is an interesting one. Certainly it has to do with expectation of certain uh, kinds of promotion responses or even the timing of promotions. And I think social sentiment analysis is fascinating and one of the really interesting areas of potential from, uh, from big data. Um, it's sometimes also called opinion mining. Um, opinion mining, I beg your pardon. Uh, we're using things like uh, techniques like natural language processing or text analysis or something that they like to call computational linguistics, basically to go through the, the vast trove of, um, uh, of social media material and, and of content and, and extract subjective information. So if you apply it to social media, sometimes you can sort of take the temperature of consumer opinion about, so, about topics of interest. And it may include but, you know, branded messages. Uh, it's not limited to that. Uh, what's, what's remarkable about that is that you can find answers not only to the, to the issues you're looking for, but in some cases issues that um, you might not have suspected until you look at the, uh, the large flow of data. Uh, this is, um, for me, this is a, a very interesting area of potential for uh, 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 social media and, um, and, and even search data where um, we can discover things with, with new types of analysis. Uh, those insights have to be combined with others to be put into action. Uh, however, I, I, we see some, some movement in that direction. Now I think I'm going to take a, another crack at, uh, at our questioner here. Okay, sure. The and, question uh, says, retailers have so much data and have been working with it so long that it seems that they would want to share the insights and burden with CPGs for more effective promotions, pricing, et cetera. Uh, well, my goodness, that, that's a, a conversation, it seems to me, we've been having for a long time, even before uh, anyone conceived of the term big data. Um, uh, yes, it would be, I, th I think, in a, in, a, in a fair and equitable world, retailers would, would see the uh, inherent benefits of sharing this data back with their, with their brand partners uh, in terms of just getting the best possible programs, merchandising, promotions from those partners. Um, I think there's probably um, perhaps a less utopian view at retail, and I, I, I think that goes back a, a very long span of time. Um, and uh, 
what retailers collect, even I think including the, the very much larger databases now that come with frequent shopper programs, um, still doesn't quite hit the definition of big data. They are, this is a case of bigger databases with more fields and more, more rows and bigger hard drives. And uh, uh, I, I'm fairly sure, as, as the questioner uh, I think seems to imply, that a lot of that information is not really exploited to the extent that it could be. Um, so here I'm speaking more, frankly, from some of my own knowledge that I am from survey data. Um, I hope that's understood. But um, uh, boy, I guess if I had to put the answer into one word, it's cultural. And, um, uh, and, and, and really still worthy of more discussion perhaps than we have time for today. And so I hope this enlightens a little bit uh, about that topic. Um, uh, retailers do stand to benefit from this kind of data sharing, in my opinion. I think um, there are some uh, there are some obstacles that um, have uh, uh, probably less to do with, with about common sense and more about um, uh, the way things are done and the nature of relationships between uh, trading partners. So I'll move along now um, and speaking about social media, um, another layer of information that. Boy, you can imagine the, the potential value when you start to combine this with things like that frequent shopper data that we talk about. Um, it, it could really add some, uh, uh, some layer of insight and nuance. And so uh, brand marketers are starting to collect this so-called digital data uh, uh, coming from Facebook and mobile and tweets and uh, Pinterest and any number of other um, uh, participatory um, applications out there. Um, that information is um, – not necessarily easy to interpret, but first you have to get it, and then you have to find what to do with it. Um, and uh, here again, there's, um, there's a leaning toward for the industry now of using this kind of data, the social media data, to develop new insights. Um, so you know, it's clear, getting the data is not the same as putting it to work. But uh, you know, the ready availability of content from these applications can make it impossible, I think, to turn away. So, and if the volume is an indicator of the potential value, it may even be irresponsible to not try. So, uh, you know, there's um, uh, there's some, you know, in indication here that this is going to product development decision making, which is again one of those areas where we seem to have um, some swings in the responses, um, uh, since uh, product development is not looked at as an area as high potential elsewhere in the survey. Um, it's um, I think this is one of those areas where the, the insight is, um, is just be beginning to gel in, in, in the industry's mind. Uh, uh, it has been more obvious to, to look, or more self-evident, to look at promotion and those kinds of questions first uh, from a big data perspective. Um, and um, uh, you know, the, um, the, the product side has, to me, to my mind, a lot of potential. And then the issue becomes, or well, what is the technique going to be to derive that, that insight and value? And I'm not sure it's all been invented yet, although I know there's work going on there. So the big data challenges. So we asked, you know, we asked respondents, uh, you know, what are the top hurdles and um, uh, what are the challenges they face? And, and the, the, the overall conclusion is big data is hard. Right? It's got a host of issues. And, um, uh, and, and figuring out how to get value from it is, is obviously ranked as highest here by our respondent base. Uh, and um, that makes sense because it's not just how to get value. We, 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 as you know, we're, uh, we saw elsewhere that the ROI uh, know-how is still an area of growing um, uh, uh, capability as well. So it, it's difficult to, to even know if you're deriving value in some instances. Um, and that could be an inhibitor on progress. But um, you know, uh, integrating multiple data sources is clearly an area where technique is still being developed. And um, um, putting the skill sets together um, it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, uh, you know, dropping down, we, we kind of have another little sort of step, uh, step down in the next group. And so funding, not as much of a problem for many. Defining strategy, not so much of a problem. Understanding what is big data, well, it looks like um, uh, 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 that's still a challenge for, for more folks in the CPG industry 
than, for example, the, uh, the industry-wide respondents that Gartner mentioned. Uh, they, they said it was about a 10-point differential. So perhaps CPG is um, lagging slightly in, um, in having that kind of clarity about um, what big data means in their context. Um, so um, uh, that, that I thought was an interesting, uh, uh, interesting issue. It looks like a low response, but actually perhaps it's a little bit higher than uh, uh, some of the um, um, comparables in the rest of the industry. All right, business benefits. Way to the top of the list, clearly, consumer insights. And for our respondent base, uh, not, not particularly surprising. Um, it's, um, uh, it's, clearly, it's clear that we have benefits coming from the use of big data already. And um, you know, those top three, the black bars, consumer insights, segmentation, integrated planning, um, and, um, and, and even a new product innovation right there, are, um, are at the top um, really about driving, in a, uh, driving differentiation, I should say, for, uh, for CPG companies. Um, it really does make sense in a marketplace that's very crowded and with a great many choices. So um, operational benefits, things like demand forecasting or inventory optimization, retail execution, they really fell to the bottom of the list in terms of benefits. So these are areas where um, they have not seen the advantage yet at least according to our respondents base. Um, uh, consumer insights really stands out, and um, uh, uh, it's interesting that, um, uh, 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 that the product innovation scores relatively high here. Um, I keep returning to that, I know, but only because we've seen uh, such a, a swing in some of the other, uh, other data points. And perhaps this is a case in research where it's about how you ask the question and of whom. So let's we'll shift a little bit to um, the strategic priorities. It's quite evident that uh, you know, CPG marketers are, are they've embarked on the journey um, uh, as as a as a uh, as a group. Um, uh, this industry is trying to make the most of big data opportunities. Um, that may not be uniformly true, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But um, in general, professionals naturally gravitate towards activities that are aligned with their existing business priorities. And it's really not a surprise to see a focus on the retail environment. So let's take a look. So these activities, what's most likely to benefit? Well, in-store and shopper marketing insights are really seen as the greatest areas of benefit for the use of big data. And this is a forced choice survey question, so 27% um, picked it as, uh, as the top of the list. Um, it's interesting that um, uh, you know, kind of combined with um, uh, targeted promotion and trade promotion, well, that's 56% of the uses for big data focused on the retail environment, uh, these questions. Um, social media insights, product development, and here's where product development, when you're forced to choose, really drop down to the bottom of the list. Um, and and um, uh, we think that's notable. It underscores that there's an importance to using data and analytics to make trade promotions and other shopper marketing activities more efficient, and, uh, or even just the ability to measure performance. Uh, this is uh, high in the minds of our, of our group of respondents. And kind of underscoring that, so a binary question. Do you agree or disagree? Data from in-store behavior, in-store behavior, important to our organization's strategy, and absolutely that's um, uh, got a strong agreement, uh, almost 7 in 10. Um, uh, clearly, this is a place where we'd like to see some big data uh, on the brand marketing side of the equation. And uh, uh, since we've, uh, we've seen some advances in things like in-store sensing that are yielding uh, streams of data that in some respects resemble the kinds of data we're getting used to in online context, um, this is an area of high potential, um, and uh, at least for me, it's, a, it's an area that I've been uh, I've been keeping an eye on for a while. Uh, that in, that consumer behavior in the store, whether it's from video, whether it's from from uh, 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 tracking the movement of cell phones or shopping carts or um, uh, um, uh, 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 ID cans, et etc. Um, all of this, I think, can eventually figure into the um, the decision process for brands 
and um, especially in promotional areas. So we asked respondents to rate their priority on a, a number of strategic options for big data over the coming year. And um, uh, in fact, each of these statements is sort of a long form of them. Um, so, um, and, and, and they were they were given a scale. Some of you are familiar with the what's I think commonly called the Likert scale, nine point scale. Uh, they asked to rate their priorities. And um, uh, we collapsed that together to make this slide a little bit easier to discuss. Um, I do want to mention at this point that for um, individuals uh, uh, attending today who want to see the entire slide deck from these findings, that the, the version that we will distribute will include um, an expansion of each of these statements uh, so you can look deeper into those numbers if it is of interest. Um, I will say that it's, um, it is notable, and we've sort of ranked these as well, that, um, that uh, the integration of new data sources so that they can get a better look at the consumer um, it certainly rose to the top of the list uh, with almost half of the respondents rating and, and, uh, you know, as a high priority strategically over the next year. Um, segmentation next most important. Um, uh, it gets interesting down the list. There's some um, uh, sort of distribution that uh, I think is most clear when it comes to shopper loyalty and rewards. We really have kind of a polarity of response uh, with um, uh, uh, apparently there's a, a difference of opinion among the respondents about whether shopper loyalty is a high strategic priority in this instance or a low one. And uh, uh, when, when, when you, you look at the, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, application of big data strategy to this, I think that gets rather interesting. Remember, shopper loyalty databases are big but they are not necessarily big data by the definition we discussed earlier and um, uh, unless big data are, um, are integrated with those kinds of findings. Um, uh, perhaps it um, uh, uh, may not uh, look as, um, as, as interesting to uh, brand marketers uh, or to some brand marketers. Um, and that may depend quite frankly on which retailers that they're doing business with too. So as we know, there are big data proponents and the big data, uh, pardon me, there are loyalty program proponents and then there are retailers that believe strongly that they, that they won't go that direction. Um, uh, I, I should mention, we, obviously we asked about ethnic marketing strategy and it, it turned up at the bottom of this list uh, uh, in terms of the, the strategic priority. And here again may be an example of a, um, of a, of a, of a, of a marketing initiative that is also more about more conventional data analysis. Obviously, demographics would be one that comes to mind. Um, uh, of course, I feel strongly that the same big data analytics that would apply to um, the whole population would be of equal interest to any segment of the population. Um, but uh, uh, I thought this finding was interesting, or perhaps our respondents didn't feel that um, uh, this was a strategic priority on its own. Um, and. Um, uh, I think this is a question I'd, I'd like to investigate again if we get a chance to repeat the survey. All right, about roles in the organization. Well, working with big data requires people who are prepared to work with, with big data and who have the mandate to do so. And so uh, if the innovation is about what gets done, but it's also about who does it. And uh, we definitely asked about well, where does the ownership lie, who controls it, who uses it. And um, it seems that the heaviest users are not always the same people in charge of big data. And let's take a little snapshot and look at how that works out in our findings. So where's the ownership? Well, we have a kind of even split here between IT, analytics, or the business intelligence group, and marketing, um, almost evenly shared. Um, and then sales falls pretty far behind about 9%, and this might conflict with its position as a top tier user, which you're going to see in the next slide, and uh, I have some observations about that to share. Um, so there's no one perceived owner of big data, and, and this is an observation that, that Gartner reinforced as well in our conversations. Um, it's relegated, it seems, largely to functional silos. Um, what's fascinating about this chart to me are three areas that had zero responses, and those were R&D and innovation, 
manufacturing and supply chain. And again, this certainly must reflect, at least to some degree, um, who our respondent space was drawn from the CPG marketing world. But uh, none of those three areas had any response at all and, um, in terms of who owns the enterprise big data. And uh, we wonder if we ask supply chain people and manufacturing people if we get the same answers. Now contrast that with who are the top users of big data in organizations. And uh, well, clearly our, our respondent base feels strongly that it is marketing. But it's also sales. Um, uh, and uh, these numbers are quite a bit stronger than the ownership uh, response that we just looked at. And, um, and it's kind of remarkable that IT, even though it's a, control, a, a controller of big data at about a third of companies in the prior, in the prior chart, um, uh, they come up a little bit below. So um, this reflects, um, uh, I think, a uh, finding that makes some sense. Big data is not really about the technology agenda, at least I don't think so, and um, uh, it may be really about how it's put to work. So users and controllers don't necessarily need to be the same, uh, the same groups within the company. Well, this leads us to the obvious conversation, right? Well, who should control the selection and purchase and management of big data, and uh, and then in in those uh, big data, big data marketing, excuse me, and then in your organization who actually controls uh, these applications. And um, uh, this is fascinating. I personally am very heartened to see how strongly the cross-functional teams came up, not only on the should side of the equation, but even in the actually side of the equation. So in fact, um, uh, big data is. Um, uh, perhaps should not result re reside in a um, uh, in a in a silo or within a single department, um, and um, uh, you know this is a fairly, in my opinion, clear finding that um, uh, certainly reflects the um, uh, the marketing orientation of the, of the respondents, but I think also that this is this is not solely marketing's purview. Um, senior management IT must be involved by the nature of the challenge. And, uh, and perhaps the strategic importance of the decision. Um, it's notable that Gartner said that when they uh, surveyed the broader industry, that cross-functional teams um, uh, were a little bit higher in the actually department, more like about 42%. So our industry has a little ground to cover, but that's not inconsistent with some of the findings we looked at earlier in this presentation. And is there a dedicated analytics department to manage big data? Well, most of our respondents say yes, um, but not all. And uh, they have, and they, so it's a dedicated analytics team. Well, th that does make sense because new skills are needed to get this job done. Uh, the, uh, the traditional um, analytic tools for making database queries are not necessarily uh, always going to apply. And, um, and this certainly aligns a little bit with where the analytics and business intelligence groups are top users, top three users of big data. Um, this is one of the reasons. All right. Big data adoption. And here again, we use the scaled, uh, a set of scaled questions. And um, we see, I think, um, uh, you know, that activity is building pretty fast, but big data adoption is still in the early stages. So strategic and organizational changes it, that it seems to require are lagging. And this also makes intuitive sense uh, from, from, at least from my perspective as an analyst of these, of these data because you know, first the need has to be demonstrated, an understanding of um, what the opportunities are, and then the organization has to move to take advantage. And so that, this is why these, um, these numbers are not quite as strong in terms of the um, the degree of change yet, yet happening. But still, there's been some movement in go-to-market approach. And, um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll read this statement in, in full verbiage. I mean, we've adjusted our go-to-market approach with retailers to take advantage of big data activities. Uh, it's beginning to happen. We have 19% saying that um, they've made a high adjustment. Um, the team structure, the marketing team structure is, 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 is shifting. Talent acquisition, interesting area where um, I think 
we're going to see a lot of change coming up in organizations. And, um, uh, and by that I mean hiring the experts with the skill sets that specifically enable them to, to work with big data and also to apply it to the, the, marketing, uh, uh, the marketing imperatives and marketing objectives that um, uh, CPG companies uh, need to pursue. You know, any discussion of changes in the go-to-market approach with retailers is, is going to be relatively conceptual or even abstract when, when we compare it with other statements in this grouping. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the human factors here are, 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 are I, I think, very important too. And there's a divide in, the, in these between the very low and a handful of very high ratings. And it tells me that um, perhaps some of the responding companies um, who are working on their organizational priorities with respect to big data, um, they may be trying to leverage something of a strategic advantage by doing so. Uh, once again, we're going to have uh, in the handout version uh, expansion of the, uh, of the data on each of these bars. So we're getting close to the end. When it comes to priorities and practices, uh, it certainly seems like big data is very much a work in progress for CPG marketers. But they're moving beyond fundamental issues about what big data is and what it's good for. And I think we see some positive signs. The activity is certainly vigorous. Um, there's a ramp up in spending. Um, data is being collected and rolling in. And we're beginning to see some insights flow. Um, but organizations are still learning and they want to know how to um, accommodate you know, and, and work with these big data skill sets. And, and uh, there may be a relative shortage of, of talent who have those skill sets. Um, so it, it's um, uh, uh, probably it's a great opportunity if you have a uh, college graduate in the family or, or someone who's pursuing a, uh, a marketing uh, career. Boy, I think ability to be facile with big data analytics is probably a ticket. Uh, to, to the future, um, uh, and that may be true for people making career decisions. Um, ROI, still a, as much a struggle in this as it is in every other aspect of marketing. Um, there will be an ability to measure certain outcome benefits, uh, but it's never, uh, it's never easy to isolate a particular marketing activity and determine its respect on our or its, its impact on our profitability, uh, this would be no different than, than the experience we've already had uh, in our industry going back for, for many years. It's just hard to isolate and separate what big data will do for us. However, I think as we become more competent as an industry at understanding what kinds of insights, applicable insights, can be extracted from the big data flows, that we're going to learn that it does have an impact on our results. So let me make a couple of other uh, cl closing thoughts here. Um, uh, clearly, big data um, is on the radar of CPG companies. They're well aware it's important, and um, they're certainly taking, taking action. There. They're making commitments of sweat and capital to unravel big data's potential and put it to work. And much of this is done on faith and on an expectation of future success. Because that ability to evaluate the ROI of big data activities is just not well developed yet. Um, but we can feel it, and I, I, I certainly feel that way. We can feel in our bones that this is, this is something. Uh, it, it makes a difference. We, we have to put it to work. Failure to do so is probably to, uh, to lose ground competitively. Um, and the goals are well, pretty, pretty straightforward, improve in performance and retail, connect with customers better, and, and differentiate our brand and our approach. Um, and, uh, you know, strategy is moving along, but it's still uh, well-developed in a minority of companies. Talent really a big challenge right now. People who can do this job, um, great demand and, um, and hard to find. And um, going back to our kind of um, conflicting findings about product development, I think we have to con you know, can see that it's still in its, na its early stages. Right? And, um, uh, it, it seems clear that as we get strong, stronger in analyzing big data that it will impact the kinds of products we bring to market and perhaps even will lead to more creative and unique uh, uh, offerings to the consumer. 
um, which is uh, certainly what we're all after. So I see, con you know, as a conclusion here, continuing progress without a doubt signaled by these findings and definitely a can-do outlook on the part of brand marketers. So I want to thank you for listening. This uh, presentation of numbers can be dry at times, although I have to say I, I think for me this is, um, uh, this is this some fascinating results. And, thank you, uh, Jamie. That was, that was really very interesting, very intense. And while there are no questions right now, folks that have questions can uh, email Jamie directly at jtenser at vsnstrategies.com. Visit his website, vsnstrategies.com. It's a content marketing advisory firm. Everyone attending will get a copy of this deck so you can study it and pepper him with questions.